6 p.m. in Ottawa and 11 p.m. in London. This is Press TV's World News. An Aboriginal leader in Canada has said she will not meet with Prime Minister Stephen Harper unless the Governor-General joins the talks. Theresa Spence has said the attendance of the Governor-General, David Johnston, is essential when discussing the rights of Aborigines. Johnston is the representative of Britain's Queen Elizabeth, who is also Canada's head of state. Spence has been on a hunger strike since last month in protest at poor living conditions of Native communities across Canada. Natives have held many protests in support of their chief over the past few weeks. They are also protesting against legislation that affects Aboriginal lands and rights. Native communities have said the government rushed the bill through Parliament without consultation with Native groups. Well, to discuss that a bit further, we're now joined by Joshua Blakeney, Press TV's correspondent, who is joining us now from Calgary. Now, Joshua, tell us how important this demand is of Theresa Spence to meet as well with the Governor-General. I think it's highly important and necessary because, of course, over the past two centuries, the Indigenous people of Canada have ratified treaties with the Crown, with uh, Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, and her representatives, not with here today, gone tomorrow uh, politicians. And the treaties use quite flowery language, like, you know, the agreements are supposed to last as long as the rivers flow and as long as the grass is green. These are supposed to be permanent features of Canadian society, not temporary uh, pieces of legislation that can be uh, defenestrated based on the whims of politicians such as Prime Minister Stephen Harper, who is perceived to be in the pocket of the very resource companies that profit from the plundering of the resources that lie underneath the territories of Canada's original peoples. And so I think uh, Chief Theresa Spence is being uh, not only astute, but very historically aware when she demands to meet with David Johnston, the Governor General. Of course, um, when we go into Canada's history, you know, Canada is the country that didn't go along with the American Revolution, and that had a lot to do with what was going to happen to the Aboriginal peoples in Canada, because in the Royal Proclamation of 1763, based on the advice of the first British Imperial Indian agent in the 13 colonies, Sir William Johnson, the British government sought to uh, take an approach towards the Aboriginal peoples that was more, uh, more conciliatory in comparison to what those in the 13 colonies wanted. And if we look at the Declaration of Independence, we see an incitement to racial hatred. The, the founding fathers of the United States referred to the merciless Indian savages in the Declaration of Independence. And that had a lot to do with the kind of philosophy that led Canada down the line to have these treaties with the indigenous peoples. And so, to be, to be honest, I think uh, many uh, uh, experts would argue that it's an irrelevance what Stephen Harper thinks, because he's merely the Crown's Prime Minister. He's merely, he's kind of lower down on the pecking order. And the indigenous peoples have had their treaties uh, with the Crown historically. Now, of course, one big struggle for indigenous peoples, whether it's in Palestine or in North America, is to try and find a disinterested and dispassionate third party who can, uh, who can resolve disputes between the indigenous peoples and kind of the local elites. And that has been one reason why indigenous peoples have turned to the British imperial government, to Britain, to the British parliament and to the crown historically, to try and find a third party. We saw, for example, recently when Palestine got statehood, one of the great uh, achievements of that was that they're gonna get access to the International Criminal Court because there's no use going to the uh, courts of the settlers and trying to get you know, important questions such as who owns resources resolved because the, the local judges and the local politicians, they are the beneficiaries of colonization. And so it's a, it's a perennial struggle for indigenous peoples to try and find a disinterested and dispassionate and objective third party to turn to. And the crown has played that function in Canadian history of, of providing something. Because, you know, often the crown is based out of London. It's not in the, in the colonies. It's not the immediate beneficiaries. Whereas the judges and the local politicians and local elites, they're the ones who have houses and investments on the very land that are contested by the indigenous peoples. And so that's why Theresa Spence is quite astutely turning to the governor general, because he's perceived to be the kind of representative of this disinterested third party, which historically has often come to the aid of indigenous peoples. But today, unfortunately, the office of the gun governor right, general... Joshua, I do apologize for having to cut you off, but it seems that we have unfortunately run out of time. But we do, of course, appreciate your insight. That was Joshua Blakeney, Press TV's correspondent, speaking to us live from Calgary. Well, Iranian, pardon me, Iranian officials have welcomed the release of 48 Iranian pilgrims who were abducted by insurgents in Syria last August. The hostages were released following months of negotiations and a diplomatic effort.